Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell, and welcome to part three of my Electronics Assembly video series. In part three, I'm going to show you and talk about the tools that are used in Electronics Assembly. Okay, um, these are the screwdrivers that uh, are normally used in electronics assembly. Um, I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube of you guys, um, you know, showing other people how to repair vintage computers. And uh, one of the mistakes that you make is you use a screwdriver that has like a large handle and you can unscrew the end of the handle and inside the handle are all these different tips. A word of warning, do not use that kind of a screwdriver for two reasons. Number one, it's too heavy and it has too much torque. Okay, number two, it is highly prone to stripping out not only the thread, the metal threads on the screws themselves, but also the plastic threads that are in a lot of these old vintage computer cases. Because even if you're just removing the screws, the weight of that screwdriver, okay, it it push it, it applies a downward force. It causes the, the metal threads on the screw to apply a downward force on those plastic threads, wearing them out. Okay, there's a reason why we have, we use an assortment of screwdrivers like what you see here. is because the screwdrivers, the sizes, okay, the heads are different sizes for different uh, types of screws, screw heads. And also, there's different sizes because of weight and torque. One size does not fit all. Okay? So never use a screwdriver that has that big bulky handle and you, you, un, you, know, you can take the, unscrew the back of it and it's got all these little tips in it. Never use that kind of a screwdriver. When I see someone doing that, they're an amateur. They don't know what they're doing. Don't follow their instructions. Okay, I'm a professional. I'm telling you the correct way to do it. Okay, the first screwdriver here is a standard number two Phillips. This is a screwdriver that you will mainly be using for taking apart and putting back together uh, a lot of the larger uh, vintage computer like cases and, and chassis and things like that. Um, the screwdriver next to it is a standard number one Phillips. Now this one is not used as much, is not used as often. Now the main difference between these two screwdrivers besides weight and torque is that the number one Phillips has a longer, more sharper point than the number two uh, Phillips. The so number two Phillips has a shallower, broader you know, like a wider um, cross or, or Phillips uh, head. Okay, so that's the two main differences between those. And those are the two main Phillips head screwdrivers that you'll be using. Just a standard, ordinary size, number one and number two Phillips screwdrivers. Okay. The, the next screwdriver is a standard, uh, I think they call it a flat blade or a straight edge, uh, screwdriver. That's all you need. Uh, now there are different sizes of those too. There's a smaller size and there's a larger size. So when you put the screwdriver into the slot, the slotted part of the bolt or the screw and it, it wiggles a lot, that means it's too loose. Or if it's too tight, that means that you need to go with the smaller size screwdriver. So again, not one size, one size does not fit all. You need to adjust your screwdrivers according to the screws that you're using. 
or that you have to remove or, or insert or, or whatever. Okay. Now the setup screwdrivers that are next to it, the black ones with the red uh, tops, those are a set of precision screwdrivers. There is a two different size Phillips. There is two different size flat blades, and I believe there is a Torque 9 and a Torque 10. Uh, these are precision screwdrivers. They have low torque, and they are perfect for working on very small screws and bolts, and especially perfect for working on screws that go into plastic cases, like the cases of the Commodore 64, the Commodore 128, um, your Amiga 500, Amiga 600, Amiga 1200, you know, all these different computers, you know, like the Atari 8-bit computers, all these different vintage computers that have metal screws that go into plastic cases. You don't want to use the larger screwdrivers that are on the right-hand side. You want to use those smaller precision screwdrivers because they're less torque, and so they're less likely to strip out the plastic uh, threads, the threads that are in the plastic uh, screw holes. But anyway, these are the screwdrivers that you will mostly be using uh, in electronics assembly. Okay, these are the different um, types of uh, cutters and pliers. Um, that we use in the electronics industry. The first uh, needle nose pliers, we're, we're doing the lower, in the bottom roll right now, and we're going from, um, from right to left. Okay, so the first uh, needle nose pliers, those are your general purpose needle nose pliers that are used just about for everything in electronics assembly. You know, we, we use those for uh, mainly for bending leads in proper shapes or you know many different things we use those for. The middle set, those are a longer needle nose plier with a much sharper tip and those are for doing precision uh, work like with wiring like you're working with uh, magnet wire and things like that or you're doing you know highly detailed work. And both of these needles pliers, they have what's called a smooth uh, inside jaw. It's a smooth jaw. Uh, they're not made for gripping, for holding on to stuff tightly. Okay, that's where the third uh, pliers comes in. The one with the red handles. Um, those they have like uh, they have jaws that are part of the. Um, the tips, they're like a honeycomb type pattern or whatever. Sometimes they're like uh, V type jaws or whatever. But those are designed for not only being needle nose pliers, but they're also designed for gripping stuff firmly, you know, more firmly. Um, but yeah, those are the, the three types of needle nose pliers that are normally used in um, electronics assembly. Okay, now we're on the top row. Um, starting from right, uh, we're going from right to left. Um, these, uh, these are the types of cutters, you know, wire cutters that we use. Um, they're not your normal cutters. These are known as flush cutters, and I will show you why that is. I'll, I'll zoom in and, and show you. These are flush cutters. Okay, they're designed to cut flush to the board, or when you're cutting a lead, they cut the lead straight. They don't cut the lead at like uh, a V-shaped point, like normal cutters would, would cut, you know. Um, these, they're, they're called flush cutters, and this is what we use in the electronics industry. Another reason for using flush cutters is sometimes uh, when we're you know, cutting the leaves off of stuff that we've soldered, parts that we've soldered. And in certain situations, sometimes we have to cut into the solder, almost flush with the board. And this is usually because 
uh, the shielding is very close to the bottom of the board, to the, to the, uh, the solder side of the board, and we don't want any shorts or anything. So that's another reason why we usually use flush cutters. But yeah, you don't use a normal pair of, of cutters. Let me see if I got a pair to show you. Well, I don't have a pair right now. They're put away, but trust me, you don't use a pair of normal cutters. They have to be flush cutters. And you want a good quality pair. These, I think, are made in Switzerland. They're Swiss made, and they cost me about $45. But if you get good tools, I mean, you have to remember, tools are an investment. They will last you your lifetime if you take care of them. Okay, I've had these tools since the 80s. And are still in pretty good shape. Okay, the middle set of, of pliers up there, those are flat nose pliers, and they're used for like uh, you know straightening out the metal tabs on shielding that you fold back down. You know sometimes you have to fold up these tabs to to, to take off the shielding. You know. Well, those are perfect for straightening out those tabs, making them perfectly straight and flat. Okay, they're also great for straightening out the leads on electronics parts. If you want the leads straight and even with one another, and this includes the legs on integrated circuits. Um, this type of pliers, you know is great for that it's just it's just a perfect see they're they're, they're flat nose pliers or a lot of time a lot of people call them duck bill pliers but these are great for straightening out like the the tabs on shielding and for maybe straightening out the leads you know the legs on uh, integrated circuits or leads on parts you know okay now this set of pliers. This is a, an interesting pair of pliers. These cost me $85. Yes, you heard me right. 85 bucks. And what these are for, these are for um, bending leads with this just with one press. You can bend a lead to where it's got that, it's like a U shape and then it comes down. And what that's for is if you don't want parts to touch the board or to touch the solder, okay? Like this is great for if you're you're putting in like um, power resistors, and you want the power resistors to stand up off the board, so you would use that to uh, to make that kind of um, uh, to, you know to form the leads of, of those parts. Let me get a part and I'll show you. Let me get some kind of a part. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can find something. Yeah. I'll use this capacitor right here and I'll show you what that's for. Okay. Like for instance, okay. I'll show you what both of these do. Let, we got this lead here right and you can just use this just to straighten that out while you're turning it just keep pressing and it'll straighten that lead out perfectly see that's what that center pair of pliers is one of the things that it's used for okay and then these you just stick the um, hard to do it in front of the camera but you just stick the lead in there and you press and as you can see I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not but it puts that kind of like you know it makes it to where the part won't go down onto the board or it won't go into the solder because the part would be like right up here but that's what um, these pliers do that's what this type of pliers that's what it does it makes your job a whole lot easier a lot faster you know that's why they cost $85 because it speeds up your production and when you can anytime you can speed up your production you're making more money uh, per second you know so yeah 
But yeah, these are the types of pliers that are used and cutters that are used um, in electronics assembly. Okay, here um, we have, uh, on the right-hand side, we have two different types of, I think they're called spudgies. All they are is basically uh, either a fiberglass, I think the, the brown one is a fiberglass, or a hard plastic, the black one is a hard plastic. Uh, and these are used uh, for helping you do things when you're working on circuit boards. Okay, the brown one you've, you've often seen me use as a pointer in some of my YouTube videos, you know, so it's great for that too. Um, but yeah, you'll see me use spudgies all the time in, in electronics assembly, and you'll use them too. Um, but yeah, those are used quite a bit for different things in electronics assembly. And of course, the, the driver there in the middle, that's a, a nut driver. Um, you can get those in, in various sizes, uh, but they're great for like little small nuts or little small bolt heads or whatever. You know, a, a, sm a set of small nut drivers like that, I think, is, is good to have. And that particular one there I bought for removing the nut and for tightening the nut, that's on the support bar that's in Amiga 2000 computers. I actually bought that nut driver specifically for that and it makes that job a lot easier and a lot faster. Okay, next we have the three different types of uh, tweezers that are used in electronics um, assembly. These here, you know, the, the um, I'm going to go from right to left. Okay, so the one on the right that's just your standard tweezers, okay? Your standard tweezers. And then the middle one, these, these got like, like a, uh, a, they're real pointy on the ends. Okay, they're real pointy on the ends and they're curved. These tweezers are great for like when you're um, unsoldering like an integrated circuit and you want to make sure that each lead of the integrated circuit is loose and it's free. You'll often see me use those tweeter, tweezers uh, for that. Actually, I can take them and just grab the, the lead and, and see if it wiggles. You know, and so those tweezers are great for that. And this pair of tweezers, this is a specialty pair of tweezers. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but they have a, a thin, it's like a blade, a knife edge blade, and yet they're curved on the ends. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, you know. But what these are for, um, they're called label tweezers. They are great for peeling off labels or mainly for applying labels or tape. Uh, they're used a lot of times for like for uh, applying Kapton tape exactly where they need where the tape needs to go. You know, so that's what these tweezers are for. They're called label tweezers. And I usually use those with a piece of glass. I have a piece of glass that I put rubber feet on and I set that on my workbench and I can use that glass to cut uh, using a sharp exacto knife or whatever. I can cut tape precisely or labels or whatever very precisely on that glass. And then I use these label tweezers for very carefully applying that tape or those labels or, or whatever it is. Okay, so yeah. Okay, um, now uh, I'm showing you, um, we're going again from right to left, uh, the red handled uh, tool, that is a precision wire stripper, and I highly recommend that you get a good quality wire stripper like that. Um, 
And then, okay, the, the next three tools, those are the tools that are used for uh, removing integrated circuits from their sockets. Um, the first one is mainly used for the square integrated circuits that are in those square sockets. Um, a good example of that would be the Agnes chip in an Amiga computer. Um, without this tool, you know, if, if you try to remove those types of chips with like a small screwdriver, uh, you, there's, there's a high risk that you'll break the socket or even break the chip. So don't do that. Don't use screwdrivers to pry those chips out. Use the proper tool. And this here is the proper tool for that. The center tool, that's your standard um, tool that is used for pulling out your small uh, dips, like uh, drams or, or small um, integrated circuits. Usually those are good for integrated circuits between um, like four leads all the way up to about I'd say uh, like a 24 pin, like an EEPROM or something like that. You know, those are great for that. Uh, and then the, the last one there, that one is used mainly for pulling the larger I see safely out of their socket. So yeah, that's the three chip pullers that, that we use in the electronics industry. And this is the type of wire cutters, you know, that I recommend. I mean, this, this is a nice precision, you know, set of wire cutters. And I, and I highly recommend these. Uh, but yeah. Okay, and finally, um, we're going again from right to left. We've got a keycap puller. This is the actual tool that you use, or a type of tool that you use, for safely and easily removing the keycaps, like when you're trying to refurbish and clean your vintage keyboards. Uh, next to that, that orange thing that looks like a rocket ship, an Apollo 5 rocket, um, that is a component lead bender. It's used for uh, very quickly bending the leads on parts. Okay, and there's, there's, um, it's a two-sided uh, tool. There's different um, spacings on the other side. So you can use that for basically bending just about any kind of um, uh, axle lead capacitor or bending a diode or a resistor or any kind of leads, you know, any kind of devices that have leads that stick out like that. You can use this to precisely bend those leads perfectly every time to make them all the same, uh, the same length. Next to that, uh, we have a pin vise with a small, I believe that's a 16th inch um, drill bit. And what that's used for, okay. Again, I've, I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube, you guys trying to show people how to, to work on vintage uh, computer motherboards and, and how to cut the traces, you know. Well, I'm here to tell you that professionally, we do not use an X-Acto knife or some kind of a blade to cut the traces that need to be cut. No, that's not the proper way to do that. What we do is we use uh, seven power magnifier goggles, or we do it on a magnification so we can see clearly the trace, and we mark where, where it needs to be drilled. And we use a pin vise like this with a small drill bit. And we actually drill through the trace down to the circuit board. And we don't go any further than that because there might be traces underneath, so we don't want to go too deep. But we actually drill through the trace. And this is the proper way. I mean, if you ever have to cut a trace, that's how it's done. Do not use a blade, an exacto knife blade or a knife blade or something like that. Don't do it. This is the way that it's done professionally in the electronics industry. We use a pin vise and a small drill bit, and we hand drill through the trace 
that needs to be cut. Okay. The next to that is basically a piece of leather with an elastic band and that is used uh, if we need to use our finger to hold a part down while it's being soldered or unsoldered. That's to keep our finger from getting burned. That's what that's used for. And yes, we actually use those in electronics assembly. Okay, and finally, the, the two red things uh, that look like earrings, um, those are heat sinks for when we're soldering uh, heat sensitive parts. You take one of these and you know, open it up, it's spring loaded, see, and you put it over the part, and this will draw the heat. This will draw the heat away from the part while you're soldering the lead. You know, it'll keep the heat away from, from the part. But yeah, that's what these are for. They're mainly for soldering. I'll show these again um, in part four. And f well, actually part four, uh, which is going to be the through hole uh, solder, unsoldering and soldering. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this marks the end of part three. I just wanted to show you guys the tools that we use in electronics assembly, the basic tools that we use. Um, stay tuned for part four. In part four, I'm going to show you uh, what we use for soldering through hole parts. I'm going to show you the proper way of unsoldering and soldering those parts. I'm going to show you the soldering systems uh, that are used and I'm also going to show you the types of solder that we use and the types of solder braze, solder wick. Uh, I'm going to show you how to clean the boards properly, how to properly clean the boards after soldering. And then in part five, that's when I'm going to be starting the surface mount tutorials. I'm actually going to show you how to properly um, desolder surface mount or unsolder surface mount parts. And no, you don't use a hot air gun. No, you don't use that. Um, no, you don't use uh, one soldering iron with a pair of pliers. No, only stupid people do that. Those are, all, those are both the wrong ways of removing surface mount parts. I will show you the correct way to remove, to unsolder surface mount parts because I'm tired of seeing it done the wrong way. So in part five of this series, I'm going to show you the correct way to unsolder surface mount and how to properly solder surface mount parts because that's been done wrong also. I mean, you people do not know what you're doing and you shouldn't be making these videos showing other people uh, how to do what you're doing because you're doing it wrong. And no, there's not many different ways to do something. No, there's only one right way to do something. Only one right way. And I'm going to show you that way. Okay, so stay tuned for part four, which will be uh, unsoldering and soldering through hole components. And part five will be surface mount, uh, unsoldering and soldering. Um, surface mount um, components. Anyway, that's it for part three. My name is Hans George Campbell, and until next time.